So let's talk a little bit about gas pressure. So the first thing we have to do is we have to define gas pressure. And we know that pressure that we might have learned about in our physics class is force divided by area. So it's the force over a certain area. When we talk about gas pressure, and in this class we're really specifically focusing on particle collisions. Because we're focusing, we spend all of our time focusing on particles. So when we define gas pressure, the definition is that pressure is the rate of particle collisions with the size of a container. So it's the rate of particle collisions with the sides of a container. So the more collisions you have, the higher your pressure is going to be. The fewer collisions with the walls of the container you have, the less pressure you're going to have. Now we're not talking about collisions between the actual particles. They are going to collide, but we're really focusing on the collisions with the particles and the size of the container. So think about if you have a gas in a balloon. The pressure in the balloon is related to how frequently those gas particles are hitting the sides of the balloon and actually pushing it out. That's the force part of our typical definition of pressure. So when we talk about gas pressure, we're always thinking about how often those particles are gonna collide with the sides of a container. When we talk about units for pressure, we have lots of units that we can use to describe gas pressure. So one that you might be familiar with, because you'll see it on car tires and bike tires, is PSI. That stands for pounds per square inch. Um, so that's one of our pressures that you might see. Another common pressure unit is ATM, or atmospheres. So let's actually define these. So this is pounds per square inch. And then ATM is at the spheres. So we have PSI, we have atmospheres. Another common one that you might see is MMHG. That stands for millimeters of mercury. HG is the symbol for mercury. We haven't talked about element symbols yet, but HG is the symbol for mercury. And MM is millimeters. So this is millimeters of mercury. And then we could also have TOR. That doesn't stand for anything, it's just TOR is a possible definite or unit for pressure. And then another one, one more that you might see is KPA, which stands for Kilo Pascal. And that is the SI unit for pressure, is a Kilo Pascal or a KPA. So we have five different units that we might see used for pressure. PSI, pounds per square inch. ATM, which stands for atmospheres. MMHG, which stands for millimeters of mercury. TOR, which is just TOR. And KPA, which stands for kilopascals. So all of these have different scales, but they all describe the same thing. They're all used when we're talking about measuring pressure. So the next thing that we need to think about is what types of things can change pressure. So if pressure is the rate of particle collisions or the number of particle collisions with the walls of a container, what could change the pressure? What's going to change how often particles collide with the walls of a container? So let's address that question. There are three main things that we are gonna focus on for factors that can influence pressure. And the first is volume. And in our equations, and when we talk about it, we're going to abbreviate volume with a capital V. And when we talk about volume, we're talking about really the volume of the container. So we know that a gas will occupy whatever space the container has. So the volume of the container is going to be the same as the volume of the gas. So this is really focusing on volume of the container.
And our typical um, units for volume are milliliters, liters, and centimeters cubed. Those are all units that you might see with volume. The other one, or the second thing that influences pressure is the number of particles. And we're going to abbreviate this with a lowercase n. So that's a lowercase n. And that's just referring to the number of particles that are in the container. Now the unit that we're going to use to talk about number of particles is kind of a weird unit. And in unit three, we're just going to go with it, and we're going to talk about it more here coming up next in unit four when we focus on just how we count particles. But the unit that we're going to use is called a mole. Spelled just like the mole, the creature, but this is mole referencing the number of particles. And a mole is abbreviated M-O-L. I don't know why they just took off the E. Who knows? But we'll see it abbreviated M-O-L. But the symbol is an N. So anytime you see an N in an equation, you know that we're referencing number of particles, and the units for that are going to be in moles. So we have the volume of the container, the volume of the gas. We have the number of gas particles in the container. And then the last thing that can influence pressure is temperature. And temperature is going to be abbreviated with a capital T, just like it was when we talked about temperature in Unit 2. Temperature, we know, affects the speed of the particles. That was something we learned about previously. We know that a uh, gas with a higher temperature is going to have faster moving particles than a gas with a lower temperature. So we have temperature, which is really talking about the speed of the particles or how fast they're moving. And the units that we're going to use with temperature are Kelvin. And remember, Kelvin is abbreviated with a capital K. So if we think back, the difference between Kelvin and Celsius was that Kelvin was an absolute temperature scale. So it has no negative values. And this is when it becomes actually important because we need to have temperature numbers that aren't negative in order to do calculations for gas pressure. So we need to remember how to convert between Celsius and Kelvin. So if we're going to from Celsius to Kelvin, we're gonna take our temperature in degrees Celsius, we're gonna add 273, and that gets us our temperature in Kelvin. If we want to go back the other way, if we want to go from Kelvin to degrees Celsius, we're going to start with our temperature in Kelvin, we're going to subtract 273, and that will get us our temperature in degrees Celsius. So we have three main factors that can influence our pressure. We have the volume, which is the volume of the container, so that's the amount of space that the particles have to move. We have the number of particles, so how many particles there are. And then we have the temperature of the particles, because we know that that influences the speed of the particles. Um, volume, we're going to measure in milliliters, liters, centimeters cubed, same units as before. Our number of particles, this is a new unit, we're going to measure number of particles in moles. And then our temperature, this is where we're going to use our Kelvin temperature scale. And remember, to convert between Celsius and Kelvin, you're going to add 273. And to go from Kelvin back to Celsius, you're going to subtract 273. So we've looked at how each of these factors are abbreviated, and then as a final note, when we talk about pressure in an equation, pressure is going to be abbreviated with a capital P. So we have pressure, we have temperature, we have our number of particles, and we have our volume, and those are the types of variables that you're going to see in Unit 2.